Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for an opportunity you've granted us to look into your word. Pray that you grant us the Holy Spirit to bring this word to life in our lives. Thank you for answering our prayers in Jesus Christ's mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is our sister, Sister Lovet Mukaharu. Okay. Uh, I'm here to make a video about using our gifts and talent <clears throat> to promote the gospel of the kingdom. Okay. This um, message has been coming to my mind. I actually made a video that I posted about it, but uh, there was too much noise in the background i had to take it down so it has been impressed on me the holy spirit has been impressing this on my mind to make this video because the time is short the time is very short and god's children are not making use of the gift that he has given them okay they are not making use of the gift that he has given them the gospel of the kingdom needs to be preached so that the end can come okay now so the first question is what is the purpose of gifts what is the purpose of the gifts that the lord has given to us okay number one is for the edification of the church number two is for the sorry number one is for the edification of yourself number two for the edification of the church and number three for the purpose of evangelism or spreading the gospels we can see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 3, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 12 and 22. Okay, if you look at the book of Acts chapter 2, the apostles, the apostles were sent out, okay, to minister in Jerusalem, in Samaria, Judea, and all over the world. But they were not sent out without any gift. Okay, at the Pentecost, the Holy Spirit fell upon them and they were given diverse gifts. They're speaking in tongues and all that. This was for the purpose of evangelism. Somebody who speaks Hebrew was now speaking um, Assyria, Assyrian language, Babylonian language, Greek, uh, Spanish and all that. That was what happened. In the book of Acts chapter 2. Why? For the purpose of ministering, reaching those people that cannot understand the language. So with God, there is no barrier. For those who God has said, okay, I'm going to send you to China or I'm sending you to this place. I'm sending you to Africa. Said, oh Lord, I don't know their language. How can I go? With God, nothing is impossible. He that is sending you will give you the grace and everything you need for that work. So, the Bible records that in a day, 3,000 souls were born into the church. In a day, they healed the sick, they raised the dead, they performed all signs and, 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 and wonders, not just for them to be praised, but for the gospel of the kingdom to be enlarged. So, now, what happens when we don't use our gift? Okay, it slows down the work of God. It delays the sovereign of Christ. Matthew chapter 24 verse 8 tells us that the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the worlds and as a witness. And then the end will come. Okay, like I was saying before, God is not happy at all if we don't make use of the gift he has given us. You know, because these things are to promote his work. There was a dream my younger sister had. She had this dream in 2018. She has forgotten this dream. But I, I didn't forget. She saw the Lord Jesus sitting down with children. And then when she came, the Lord started asking her, why is it that people are so concerned about their own life? What they will be in future? Where they will go to school? Uh, where they will work? They want to be this. They want to be that. They put in so much wealth, time, and strength, energy into this work that had it been these people would convert the wealth, the energy, the time, and the strength, the determination into the work of God, that the gospel of the kingdom would have gone far. He said that the Lord Jesus Christ was almost crying. He, he, he was so sad. He said, why are people so concerned about themselves, 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 and they are living, they've left the gospel of the kingdom to suffer. So we can see 
what happens when we don't use our gift and if we don't use our gift the lord will take it away from us let us read from matthew chapter 25 let us read from matthew 24 sorry matthew chapter 25 verse 14 it says, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods, the goods at the talent of the gifts. And unto one he gave five, to the other he gave two, to the other he gave one, according to his several ability. According to his several ability. So God gives us gifts according to our ability, according to what we can do. Not just it does not just give us give gifts anyhow god give me this god give me this god give me i want to heal god give me i want to if you don't deserve it if you cannot handle it he will not give you okay so that is how the spirit of god works according to our abilities so he that had received five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents the one who traded who got to that the same thing and got um extra two but the one who got one went ahead and hid his own inside the pit let us see what happened hmm. the one who got five verse 20 says and so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents <coughs> <clears throat> saying, Lord, thou delivered unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. So this tells us that if you receive, if you use the gift that the Lord has given to you, you more will be added unto you. Say, he that is faithful in little will be faithful in much. So let's see what happens to the one who did not make use of his own. Verse 24 says, And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent on the earth. Lo, there thou hast it. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knew it that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou orders therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received my own usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it to him which had ten talents. 10. So if we don't make use of our talents, the Lord will take it away from us and give it to others. That reminds me of a dream I had in 2015. Okay, when I started receiving messages from the Lord, I didn't know what to do with them. I gave my life to Christ in 2012. And then from then, I started receiving messages, especially warning messages about the destruction of the world, the destruction that is coming upon the world for people to repent, for people to give their lives to Christ, that um, destruction is coming upon the world, Christ is coming again. That was basically the messages I I started receiving, but I didn't know what to do with them, okay, until the Lord appeared to me in the dream and told me that he was going to take my gifts away. He told me that, that all the prophecies that he has been giving to me, why am I not sharing them? That do I think they are for my own consumption? That was exact what he used. Do I think that they are for my own consumption? When I said, Lord, <laughs> no, I, he said, all dreams have been given to you. Why don't you want people? So the Lord is not happy when we don't make use of the gifts and the talents has given to us. To so further his kingdom, he wants souls to be saved. He, 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 he does not want people to perish in sin. That is why he came to die. Will his, die will, will his death be in vain? No. That is why he gives us gifts to make use of this, of this gift. Okay. So in that dream, he told me that if I don't make use of the talent that's given to me, that he's going to take it away from me and he's going to give it to somebody else that needs it. Somebody else that has been using his or her own and I'll become useless. So from that day, I started making use of my talents. Now, okay. Like I said, God gives us um, gifts, okay, according to our ability. And <clears throat> now, the next that brings us to the next question. The next question is, how do I grow? How do I grow my spiritual gifts? Okay, some people will be praying, oh Lord, give me this gift. Maybe they have the gift of healing, and maybe they want uh, the gift of uh, speaking in tongues. Or the gift of uh, miracles and or prophecy, 
But they are yet to use the one that the Lord has given to them. Probably because they have not identified it. Okay. So you don't just ask. You can see what happened from what we have read in the Bible in Matthew 25 from 14. Down. It says the one who got five, three dead, walked with that one. And five extra were added to him. So that means if we make use of the one we have, we would receive more. It's as simple as that. If we make use of the ones we have, we would receive. Or if we make use of the ones we have, and as we are going about God's work, God's business, and we see the need of these gifts and we don't have it, then we can pray and God will give it to us. Paul said it. You can pray to receive it. But that is when you're already making use of the one you have. <clears throat> already. Okay? You don't leave them dormant and you're praying for more. It doesn't work that way. Okay? Then... That brings us to how do we recognize our talent? How do we recognize our talent? Very easy. Be active. Be active. When you are active in your local church, wherever you are, you're active, you're coming out to do something, then you would be able to recognize that this is your talent. This is your gift. Even if you don't, people will say, ah, don't shy away from the work of God. Sometimes they may call you to teach. You say, ah, I don't know how to teach. Oh, I'm shy. I'm shy. Have you tried it before? How do you know that you don't know how to teach? By the time, as long as you study your Bible diligently, the Holy Spirit teaches you. And by the time you are called upon, it is the Lord that has directed them to call you. And by the time you come out and you teach, people will be, wow, so you can teach this way. You have recognized your talent. Singing, oh, I'm shy, I'm shy, I don't know how to come out and sing. By the time you come out one day and you sing, people will be like, wow, I was touched, I was moved, oh, I cried, I... It is your talent. It is your gift. Continue. By the time people come to you and say, oh, pray for me. Can I say, I don't know. Oh, you are moved. You see somebody in a situation, in a bad situation. You are moved. You pray for the person. Before you know it, the person will receive healing. Ah, and you are like, oh, I didn't know I had this gift. You continue. That is the way to recognize your gifts and your talent. Be active. Make use of them. Okay. How do we receive the gifts? of the holy spirit like was okay how do we receive this gift i see some people who are just praying father i need this gift give me the gift of healing give me the gift of speaking talk give me the gift of you know don't waste your time too much hmm? if you repent from your sins you give your life to christ you repent from your sins you pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And when you are born again, you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You will receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit gives the fruit and the gifts. It is from one Spirit. Let us read 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Okay, First Corinthians chapter 12. Let's start from 7 because of time. Okay, say, but the manifestation of the Spirit, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with her. For one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gift of healing by the same Spirit. So, why am I reading this? I will not finish it. Once you finish it, you can go down to verse, to verse um, 11. But he says, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man, the prophet's widow, to another faith, to another healing by the same Spirit. It is a Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit that gives this gift. So if you don't have the Holy Spirit, how do you manifest this gift? Verse 12 says, For as the body is one and hath many members, body, we have eyes, we have nose, ears, mouth, ears, they are all doing different functions, but they are all important. No matter how small they are, they are all important. And all and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. So also is Christ. For by one spirit, 
are we all baptized into the into one body, which is Christ. This is the body of Christ. I am the mouth. I am the eye. You are the nose. Sister A is the mouth. Brother B is the ear. But we are all in Christ. That is how we can manifest this gift. You say, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether be ye Jew no, or Gentile, whether be you bound or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. So now this brings me to the question. That sister that is wearing mini skirts, that does not see anything wrong with it. When you tell her about her mini skirts, you say, please allow me. It is not what I wear. It is what is in my heart. Hmm? That sister that commits fornication. And when you talk to her, she will tell you, excuse me, I have the spirit of God in me. I know what is right and I know what is wrong. And she does not see that committing fornication is a sin. Hmm. That sister that comes to church and she will speak in tongue more than everybody in that church. But yet, she's just coming from the nightclub. Is that the Holy Spirit? Do not be deceived. Anybody that tells you that you can learn speaking in tongues from the textbooks. I see many videos of many so-called men of God teaching people how to prophesy. Oh, goodness gracious. What has Christianity become? Wake up. This is the word of God. Anybody who is teaching you false things, wake up. Have sense. Tell the person, no, this is wrong. That is not Christianity. You cannot learn how to prophesy. Nobody can teach you how to prophesy. It's not possible. Nobody can teach you how to speak in tongues, no matter what textbook it is. The Bible says it is the gift of the Holy Spirit. And you, there are steps. The first step is to give your life to Christ and receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. If you're not born again, I don't know the gifts you have. If you're not born again, the, well, whatever gift that is manifesting in you is not from God. Yes, it's not from God. A pastor who is living in sin and does not have the conscience, his conscience does not uh, uh, rebuke him. The spirit of God, his conscience has been seared. He's living in sin and he's coming to do healings and signs and wonders. Watch it. It is not from God. The word of God is clear. You must have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It is the spirit of God that gives it after you have been, you have come into the body of Christ after you have given your life to Christ. You receive that baptism. You cannot be speaking in tongue and you are living in sin, and you say nothing is wrong with the sinful life you're living, and you say it is all right. It is not all right. Please wake up and stop letting these people to deceive you. People are going for school of healing. They're teaching them how to heal people. <laughs> ah. It is a gift of the Holy Spirit. Listen. When you uh, 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 repent from your sins, you confess your sins, you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord, that personal Savior, you're baptized with the Holy Ghost, God will give you the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The fruit of the Holy Spirit will be made manifest in you, first of all. That is the main, main, um, main sign that you are born again. The second one, then the gift will be given out to you. And then what brings about the manifestations of those gifts is how you use them be active when you use them more will be given unto you it's as simple as that there's no rocket science in it as simple as that please stop going to the mountain to do 21 days prayer and fasting three days drive fasting because of gifts of the holy spirit be converted be born again receive the baptism of the holy spirit first and the Lord will give you gifts. Then start making use of the gifts that you already have. And then be consistent in praying, studying the word of God, and going out for mission for evangelism. Oh my goodness. And be consistent in living a holy life. Romans chapter 12 verse 1 says, Present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. This is what God wants from us. And the sky will be your certain point. And you are not getting those gifts because you want to show off. You are getting them because you want to use them to further the Gospel of the kingdom. And God sees our hearts. He knows. So forget about your dry fasting. When you have not done the first stage, you are jumping over the second stage. It will not work. Please, have a rethink. Okay. So now, I want to talk about, briefly, about the gifts of giving. Giving, especially in the work of God. 
many Christians, God has blessed them with riches, but yet they allow the gospel of kingdom to suffer. I see many evangelists suffering, even common food, they will not even see common food to eat. Meanwhile, they are Christians who are billionaires. They are amassing money, making themselves rich. Let me tell you, it will be very, it will be impossible for you to make it to heaven because you have made yourself comfortable on earth here. How would you go to heaven? Proverbs chapter 30 verse 8 and 9 says, it says Give me neither riches nor poverty, but feed me with food. Convenient, convenient for me. Convenient, contentment, comfortable. You know, something that is comfortable for you. Not luxury. You don't need luxury as a Christian. Food that is convenient for me. Lest I be full and deny thee. And say, Okay, the Lord Jesus Christ himself says in Luke 16 verse 9, he says, use your worldly wealth to gain friends for the kingdom. Worldly wealth to gain friends for the kingdom so that you'll be rewarded in heaven. Okay, when we look at Matthew 6, 19 to 21, it says, uh, do, do not lay up for yourselves treasure here on earth. Remember the young rich ruler who Christ asked to sell his possessions and give them to the poor. He became sad. He became sad. So these things would make us derail from God. Okay, look at what Paul says. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 10 says, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. They have what? Erred from the faith. This is what Proverbs chapter, Proverbs chapter 30, verse 8 and 9 says. It says, Do not make me too rich, else I will do what? Forget the Lord. I say, Who is the Lord? So how are we going to be rich and still maintain our relationship with God and still be able to make it? Okay, verse 17 says, Charge them that are okay. Verse 17 says, Charge them that are rich in this world, that they not be high-minded, not trusting of certain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Okay, see, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 17 tells us that it is the Lord who gives us the ability to make wealth. And then if we look at um, Romans chapter 12, I think 4 to 8, we'll see that the gifts. The uh, giving, giving is mentioned there as a gift. Giving is mentioned there as a gift. Now it says that they do good, that they be rich in good works. They should be what rich in good works and not in their possessions that they have acquired. But their richness should should be based on the numbers of the number of people that they have helped. Okay, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold to unto eternal life. The same thing that the Lord Jesus Christ says in Luke 16, verse 9. The same thing that he says in Matthew 6, 19 and 21. So this tells us that if you don't give out the riches that the God that the Lord has given to you. I'm not saying you shouldn't enjoy what God has given to you with your family. Yes, live well, be comfortable, but don't give yourself, don't intentionally give yourself a luxurious life. It will be difficult. The Bible says, Jesus Christ Himself said that it will be difficult for a rich man to make heaven. To be impossible, impossible, to be difficult. It will be easier for a camel to pass through an iron of an idol, of a needle, than for a rich man to make heaven. Why? Because it's comfortable here. As like, he has everything. Why do I need God anymore? Just like what Proverbs say. He say, don't give me too much riches, lest I forget thee and say, who is God? So give out what you have. Give more than half of what you have if you are that rich. There by laying up for your subject on heaven. And when you do so, you are walking in line with the will of God. You are spreading the gospel of the kingdom with your money. You may not be able to travel to one remote area to preach. You may not be able to come out and make videos. You may not be able to post. You may not be able to go out for evangelism, money, cry, and the rest. But your money is going, doing that work for you. That if you are in Christ, though, I'm not talking about worldly philanthropists. I'm talking about Christians. So, my brothers and sisters, please let us put this word into practice. The Lord is not happy that people are not making use of their gift. 
to serve him, to further the gospel of the kingdom. He is not happy. Please, let us start making use of the gifts and talents and abilities that the Lord has given to us. Use our wealth. Use everything that the Lord has given to us to further his kingdom and it shall be well with you. Thank you for watching. Please share this video, subscribe and like.